Okay, let's get started. So we have this simple interior scene that have already been rendered. I have used the beauty pass render element for it. So I've made a clay render of this interior and I might use it as an additional layer. Also, I've made a screenshot of a 3D Max viewport. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it to make our video more visually appealing. So then I save the interior in the CXR format. What's very important, actually, I've used light mix for this scene. So here we have layers with light sources. Let's see what that looks like. So first we have environment. It's the main light that comes from the window. From the windows, we have a lamp on the second floor. Then we have a bra lamp, kitchen light. Next, we have sunlight. There are several point lights as well. Here's the main lamp above the sofa. And finally, table light. That's it. In another video of mine, I've already talked about how to set up light mix. Click the link at the top of this video if you're interested. And now we're going to create a presentation video in the CapCut video editor. But first, we need to save all layers with our lights as individual files so that we can easily use them during editing. Okay, so we're still in Corona Image Editor. We click Save All and select the path where we need to save our files. Next, we select the file type. JPEG is enough for me. Name the file and click Save. Now make sure the files have been saved in the right folder. As I already said, I will be using CapCut. It's free and very easy to use. It's an increasingly popular choice to create reels, shorts, and regular videos like the one in this tutorial. So in CapCut, we click New Project to open a new window. And we need to import our images via the import function. So we click Import and select Images. I select Beauty Pass just in case, uh, then clay, and all the layers with lights. Viewport screenshot, sun, table light, main lamp, and other lights. For additional effects, you can use other layers such as sea masking, mask, and other masks. Whatever you like, your imagination is the limit. So we click open. And if you want to take your visualization skills to a professional level, make sure to check out our website, render.courses. You will find a very large selection of courses there. There are many workshops. The link is in the description. And now let's go back to our lesson. So the next step is music selection. This is a very important step that can be very time consuming, actually. Editing process heavily relies on music. Selecting music is one of the most crucial aspects of creating presentation videos like this one. So let's go to the audio tab. And I've already picked some 
tracks that might be good for our presentation video. So then I type hello gentle breeze in the search box. So CapCut has a massive library of audio tracks. You can listen to any track by simply double-clicking it. We drag the audio file to the editing area. And then go back to the media tab. All right, so we're ready to start editing our video. And since we're editing our footage based on the music, we need to pick a strong, clear sound that will mark a switching from one layer to another. So keeping control pressed, I can enlarge this histogram. And let's listen to the track once more. You can simply hit spacebar to start the track. So you hear this sharp, clear sound. This is when we can switch between frames. So let's start with a bass layer. And actually, I, I forgot to import the environment layer. So we import that and drag it to the editing area. And now let's pick the right spot for switching. I think it's somewhere here. So this is where we'll switch to another layer. But seeing that the environment layer is a base layer that will have all kinds of lights added upon it, we need to stretch it throughout the entire length of the video. Now, I don't know yet how long our video will be. We have several layers with light here. But I don't think that it will be too long. Somewhere around 10 or 15 seconds, I think. So anyway, we can cut our video at any point. So now, let's add another layer. Let it be kitchen light. So we simply drag this layer here. And now we need to place it in such a way that it appears precisely when we hear the sound. And the sound is over here. So we can see that the layer is black and we're not getting the effect we want. This means we need to change the blend type. Head over to video blend and screen. So here you can hide the layer and see how it works. And so now we need to place the layer properly. Once again. Okay, good. I think that'll do. And now we'll stretch this layer all the way to the end. Now let's add another layer, just like we did before. The tap sound is in this spot on the histogram. So we simply move this layer to this spot. And also change the blend type. Let's see. Other layers are added exactly like before.
All right, so to make our video more engaging and creative, we can add the viewport view as well as the clay render. So we need to find another expressive sound for them. I like this sound here. This is where we add a layer with the clay render. This layer will only appear for a moment. We remove the rest of the frames. Let's see what we get. And finally, let's add our viewport view. Let's take a look again. Well, we're almost done. The only thing left to do is to cut the video at a logical moment. So let's cut it here at the next sound. And now we can cut off the layers. Here is how we do it. We select the layer and click Ctrl B. And we repeat that for each layer. Same with the music. And so our video is now ready. Let's export it. So I'm going to call it YouTube video one. The default resolution is 1080. Codec and other parameters will leave them at their default settings. So click export and the video is exported pretty fast. If you're creating a real or a short video, you'll need to change the aspect ratio. So what you want to do is click here and select the 9 to 16 ratio. And make sure to stretch your image or scale it. So this means you'll have to somehow enlarge all of your layers like so. And I advise you against using this method though. It's better to choose the right aspect ratio in 3D Max before rendering. You just go to render settings and choose the right ratio. So you need to change output size to custom and set the height at 1920 and set the width to 1080. So you'll end up with something like this. And don't forget to uh, reposition the camera so that the render looks good in this aspect ratio. All right, so that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson. Bye.